Have you looked into the night sky lately and seen the silhouettes of large creatures flying overhead? If you have, there's every chance you're watching a grey-headed flying fox heading out for a feed. Grey-headed flying foxes have become a common sight in the night skies around Adelaide, and thousands of them descend on the trees around Botanic Park in the day. Now, since their unexpected arrival in 2010, a lot of people have had to learn a lot about what it's like living with grey-headed flying foxes in our landscape. The ideal person to tell us more is ecologist Jason Van Weenen from Green Adelaide. This is the grey-headed flying fox and natural range is along the east coast of Australia but over the last decade or so they've sort of crept around into South Australia and so now they're a permanent feature here. The colony's located here in Botanic Park, so just right out uh, near the entrance of the Adelaide Zoo. How many grey-headed flying foxes are actually in this colony? So the colony at the moment is up to its maximum sort of we've seen. It's around that 25,000 mark. They're primarily a blossom flying fox. They also get into a wide variety of fruits, so they can impact on fruit crops, and so we've been working closely with some of the fruit grower associations. How far do they fly from the colony here, or the camp, to get food? Most of them are probably foraging within that 20 to 30 kilometre range. Are there any issues arising from this colony in Adelaide? One of the main things we've been keen to do is just raise some awareness about what it means to have flying foxes in South Australia. Obviously we have to make sure people are safe around them, they do carry some diseases. People shouldn't be touching flying foxes or any of the microbats as well. Over time the trees have been impacted here in Botanic Park. What happens is when flying foxes land they've got a little hook-like claw and that actually causes a bit of ring barking on the branch and eventually over time the foliage can die. So the Botanic Gardens have been replacing the trees to account for that. And how are Green Adelaide working with organisations and other groups with the grey-headed flying folks? Our role is to try and get stakeholders together and try and link up researchers with SA Power Networks or carers who, who do a lot of work here rescuing sick and injured grey-headed flying foxes. Alison Purnell Sullivan, Environment and Sustainability Manager from SA Power Networks, knows all about the issues caused by wildlife like grey-headed flying foxes. It's wonderful that we have so much wildlife in Adelaide living in our urban areas, but we find sometimes with grey-headed flying foxes that they can get themselves into trouble. They can often cause outages uh, in relation to our equipment, so they'll make contact with things like our lightning arresters or across our power lines, because the actual spacing of our power line equipment is between 20 uh, centimetres and a metre, and their wingspan is about a metre. So a metre. they can actually make contact, and unfortunately it does injure them and sometimes kill them. Normally it's the juveniles that are causing a lot of the problems. Last summer we had about 80 outages caused by the juveniles. So what can be done to manage the issue of grey-headed flying foxes and electricity outages? Kim Williams, Reliability Manager at SA Power Networks, explains. So grey-headed flying foxes, uh, basically outages on our network were unheard of back four or five years ago and they've really escalated. So every outage we investigate, uh, we look at the location, what sort of equipment that they're shorting out across and from there we develop plans to cover up equipment. So what we've done at the top of this pole is we put covers on the live wires up the top so that'll stop the firing fox from basically resting closer to the cross arm. And then just down below there we've also put some covers which we actually call frisbees. What they do is they stop the animal from again getting between the live components of the equipment and also the earth components so we don't have a blackout. On lots of lines that have random outages everywhere is we'll pull additional switches on the lines so to reduce the amount of customers impacted by the interruptions so we might get it down to three or four hundred homes or businesses interrupted so basically less power outages for less people. By covering up the equipment we also we mitigate the outages in the first place but also we save another animal's life. How are you managing this? Well, we've teamed up with Department of Environment and Water at Green Adelaide and also Bat Rescue SA and Fauna Rescue because those fantastic uh, volunteers are helping us with collecting the injured flying foxes. We're also doing a lot of research and we're trying to understand a little bit more about their behaviour to better predict where those outages are going to be. Alison, I dare say the, the grey-headed flying fox is here to stay. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we should really embrace that. I mean, they're a really interesting creature. They're actually really gorgeous. And I think that we should really appreciate the fact that we've got this wonderful wild creature in our urban areas. 
Next time you visit the Adelaide Zoo or are wandering around Botanic Park, remember to look up and marvel at the curious creatures resting above.